you and I were talking about this previously, your team's pretty large. Could you talk a little bit about the structure of your team and how it all works? Sure. So the brand marketing organization here is really consists of four pillars. So we have our brand strategy team. We have our creative and content development, um, integrated media, and then social marketing. And so our, our whole group, the brand marketing team, um, we're, we're a large size, we're about 80 people, um, and, but we service the entire organization. So we sit in the commercial group. So we work closely, closely with our partners over in commercial strategy, revenue management, meetings and conventions, um, but we ultimately collaborate with every corner of the company. So we're a portfolio of you know 21 resort brands, but within that, thousands of, of brands across all of our various experiences and venues. And so our team oversees all of the brand strategy, brand development, marketing strategy, and creative development for all of those brands. Wow. And that's definitely been keeping you busy, I would imagine, especially over the last <laughs> year and a half and how your business has had to change and, and all that. But I do know, I feel like it's either been you know, businesses have really thrived during the pandemic or they've struggled. Um, can you talk a little bit just about, you know, how you've adapted and, you know, what, where you're looking to take your business through the end of this year? Because I know there have even been changes out in Vegas, right? With mask mandates and things like that. But even as you look into next year, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Sure. So um, you said thrive and struggle. We yes. have definitely um, lived in both of those spaces at different times throughout the last 18 months. Um, you know, March 17th of 2020, every one of our resorts closed across the entire across the globe. And so um, I think the theme and even the theme going into next year is really around agility. We've always been agile. Um, our business is very fast paced. We're a 24 seven business. You know, something's always happening in our world, but agility was never more prominent than it was the last 18 months. So very quickly looking at how do we engage our customers when we can't physically see them. And that's that's the service we provide is these incredible in-person experiences. So how do we engage them? Um, thriving in a way though that, and I think this happened for a lot of companies, you know, we had to accelerate some of our other growth strategies. So our digital transformation, we accelerated how we're, um, you know, using our digital experiences to enhance the customer experience. So when those customers came back, we had rolled out, you know, mobile check-in and check-out across our entire um, portfolio. And so it, it's definitely accelerated our digital um, landscape in, in a way that was long overdue and just really exciting. And I think it's also just about, you know, understanding who those new customers are. And so when we look at the back half of the year or now past the back half of the year, we it's just about maintaining that agility. You know, we've been very fortunate that our customers came back. Um, we, they, they live for the experiences that we give and we've seen them come back. They've also been incredibly resilient alongside with us though. Um, as you said, we um, introduced a new mask mandate back in July uh, as we saw, you know, cases rising, but our customers, they put their masks on and they came right back. And so it hasn't impacted, you know, the really resiliency of our incredible employees, but also our customers. And so I think it's just maintaining that agility. We're obviously keeping a really close eye on what's happening with the Delta variant and how that's impacting business. But again, just, you know, staying in tune and, and agile as needed. Um, and I think what's exciting going into the rest of the year is again, how we have really accelerated our thinking around innovation around the guest experience, what we need to do. The traveler coming out of COVID is, especially that like modern luxury traveler is just a much more discerning customer. So, you know, fast tracking how we service them and, and you know, speak to them, that's, that's been exciting. And so excited to see that landscape continue to grow. Yeah, and I will tell you personally, from my own experience, I went to a new property that I'd never been to of years before, because we do have, you know, MGM here in Detroit, but I was at the Borgata in New Jersey, and I thought I felt completely safe. I thought it was, a, I had a wonderful time to it. They're very good cover band there, I'd like to say. So, um, so you guys are doing well. I actually got to experience myself, which I think was really fun. Um, so I know you mentioned the mobile check-in and some other things, but I do know that your digital platforms have been increasingly important. You know, what has permanently changed? What do you think that, what's permanent now in your business? Oh man, I mean, it's, what's permanently changed is how we 
I mean, we, we did everything from as many other companies did, like we took a step back and we looked at completely overhauling our segmentation, how we interact with customers. Um, so I think we're much more sophisticated in how we, you know, engage our consumers at various points throughout the consumer journey. We're much more prescriptive in our messaging. Um, as you can imagine with a portfolio of brands of ours, it's, it's, it can sometimes be difficult to kind of really land each brand in its voice in the right way at the right time to the right customer. And so we, we just kind of really overhauled how we engage our customers. And so how we message them, the creative that we're delivering to them, um, that's really specifically within the marketing um, vertical. Uh, we're much more we're much more prescriptive with our spend, I think, and you'll see that across a lot of companies as well. You know, really introducing you know continuous improvement and optimization and, and testing into the right opportunities. So, whereas you know business as usual is no longer business as usual, we're constantly flexing and trying out new things. And I think we've also been given you know a bit more empowerment to take greater risks, as long as we're you know constantly. Um, you know, measuring those rewards. And so that that's a new way of thinking. And that's a new muscle that we've built over the last 18 months that will not change. And really excited about that. And just again, this era of innovation, um, the closures for us where we struggled, it really inspired innovation and us, you know, as a, as a business taking a step back and saying, what do we need to do differently? That won't change. And that's really exciting. I love that. And I do think that businesses that were able to figure things out quickly and innovate are the ones that have continued to thrive. Um, I wanted to go back just really quick because I did already see a question. And I think it kind of goes back to just your background and um, how you, you know, have done so well. It says, as a younger woman holding such a high executive role, what do you, what do you think got you to where you are so quickly? First, thank you for calling me young. I really appreciate <laughs> that. It's a great way to start this day. <laughs> Um, I think for me, and, I, and I've shared this a lot with, you know, those that I'm mentoring or, you know, young junior executives or, or junior leaders, it's really about raising your hand and not being afraid to say, I want to try that. I want to do that. And I, and I think for me, I've done that a lot throughout my career. Um, it hasn't been kind of, this is my trajectory, you know, your career is a jungle gym, it's not a ladder, but I've been willing to kind of raise my hand and say, look, I know I might not be qualified for that, but I want to try it. Um, I'm, I'm not afraid to ask for kind of what next. And I will tell you, MGM Resorts is the type of company where you, you get out what you put in. And I've been very fortunate along the way that they've taken some of those risks on me because they, they value those that are willing to stretch themselves. So I think it's a matter of, you know, if there's something you're thinking about doing or an area that's like, might not be entirely intuitive, don't be scared, you know, to Cheryl Sandberg, lean in, lean in hard and, and don't be afraid to throw your hand up. And I, and I think that's really what has given me the opportunities that I've had and led me to where I am. I love that. And I think I try to tell my team the same thing because we're growing quickly and I've got a team of about 70% women. Um, so I always love to, to, you know, let them hear other people's experiences and different ways that they can, you know, work to try things a little bit differently and, and move up ahead. Um, so I know that your team is, you know, constantly keeping consumers, customers, and clients top of mind. How do you work specifically with your agency and media partners to do so. And I will tell you, we had to change a lot of the way that we work with people during the pandemic. I mean, we're, you know, allowed a ton of flexibility. We got rid of some of, you know, the old, oh, you got to give us 60 days to cancel because a lot of businesses were changing. Um, any way to expand on that, I think would be great to hear. Sure. So we, I mean, consumer insights and like understanding consumer behavior has always been a part of what we do. I think we just got much more sophisticated and kind of expanded the various inputs that, that lead to that, you know, that are ultimately informing our decisions so, and, and growing that kind of framework. So it's not just what do we know about our customers, but how are we keeping a pulse on the macro climate? What, are, what is happening overall? And what was, ha and you know, as marketers, we tend to stay within like what's happening in the travel industry. Well, when the pandemic happened, it was critical that we knew what was happening in every industry because the themes across marketing and advertising specifically were, were you know, prevalent. And so for us, it was our agencies. We have an incredible AOR and it was calling on them to say, be our eyes and ears. 
And so the flexibility we created with one, just our scope with our agency, pretty much as I'm sure it did with a lot of companies went out the window and it was like, how do, how do we work together? You need us, we need you. And we're very lucky that our agency is, is very much just an extension of our team that couldn't have been more profound during the pandemic. They were our, our global eyes. They were the ones that were telling us what was happening in the world of advertising and marketing across all industries globally. And so that became a critical component to informing our strategies and how we were going to you know, maintain that customer connectivity through the pandemic. And, and that won't change either. And, and I think it's actually made our partnerships stronger as we emerge and, and look to you know, 20 to strategic planning. Yeah, and I know that, um, we, I think we also talked about this, that we are spending a lot of time on Zoom calls. We're spending a lot of time trying to keep our teams engaged. What is something in particular that you guys have been doing? Because I know, could you tell us a little bit about what the work um, situation is, whether you're in person or the team's remote? Yep. And, um, I will also say when we talk about what's permanently changed, that has been incredible, quite honestly, is the flexibility that we've built into our, you know, normal workday. We were a pretty standard, like in the office, Monday through Friday, pre-pandemic. And now we've just created such incredible flexibility for our teams. Our team on the marketing side is still fully classified as work from home. I'm a bit of a hybrid. Um, but even in the office I'm in now, they're, they're, it's a ghost town. There's no one here. And our team is working from home and they're Honestly, they've been more productive. They've produced better work than they ever have because they have that flexibility. Um, I think one of the things that us, us as leaders leading through a pandemic became so critical was our ability to you know, have empathy and support around the work-life balance. What our families, what our, what our colleagues were dealing with in their personal lives, none of us really know the extent of how difficult that was, whether it was being a mom and doing homeschooling or you just never really know. And so I think our ability to create that flexibility and that safe space for, for our teams to you know, work from home, get the work done, the, the normal work day is gone. It's, it's about you know, doing, the, doing the work when it's right for you and, and maintaining that life balance because um, it was never more critical than you know, coming into the pandemic and coming out of it even more so now. And I think that's such an incredible change for the good. So our team's working from home. They obviously were a live business. So they you know, come and they experience the property and they engage with customers as they need to, but otherwise they're, they're working from home and it's, it's great. No plans yeah. to check. Yeah, and I've, I've kind of had the same thing. Half of my team was already remote anyway, but then those of us that have been home, I think it's been incredible. And I, I know that you're a working mom. Can you talk a little bit about work-life balance and does it exist? And then I would love for you to chat and we can get into this a little bit more about the leadership group that you're in. Sure. Um, work-life balance doesn't exist. <laughs> I, I, I think we have traditionally compartmentalized like work and life, but the truth is it, it's all who you are and it's all a part of, you know, your entire ecosystem and what you're experiencing at home is you're going to bring it to work. Be and, and it's critical that you do. It's what makes us human. And it's also what makes us empathetic leaders and servant leaders. And so um, balancing, you know, I, I have two little children. I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old. So um, hectic work-life balance it, for me, for sure. Um, but I think, you know, taking my role as a mom and bringing it to work and, and deploying those same, those same kind of traits when you're at home with your children around empathy and patience and understanding and, you know, focusing on mental health that was critical for us as leaders to bring into this experience because again as we said what our teams are dealing with we we have to you know we have to be human first and deploy empathy before anything and so whereas um working moms have this kind of dual leadership role it was a real opportunity to take what we know in both scenarios and and just do better for our families and our teams and so um, the organization I'm involved with is called Leader Mom. Um, it's an incredible kind of membership community that was started by um, the incomparable Catherine, Flav Catherine Flavin, Kelly Fredrickson, and Maria Soros. And it really is just that. It's a safe kind of membership community um, for 
working mothers, mothers, um, male leaders who are passionate about supporting, um, you know, and have an affinity for this uh, to come together and share uh, their trials, their tribulations, um, break down some of those stigmas around working moms, because they very, they very much do exist. We all experience it. Um, but also to share kind of what we call our hard won wisdom, like, what, how are we winning at this game and how are we sharing those with other, you know, moms that might need a little more inspiration and might need a little more support and it, um, there's a blog and there's a podcast and there's different member events and so it's just it's something I'm, I'm really proud of the work that they're doing and, and they deserve the exposure and there are so many people that can relate to this and, and really benefit from this information and this support. And how did you stumble upon this group? And if somebody wants to get involved, um, what would you suggest? Well, leadermom.com. It's as simple as that. Check it out. Um, there's multiple ways to get involved. There's a lot of great information, but there's also, you know, a membership component where you get access to lots of other different information. Um, I had worked with um, one of the founders, Catherine Flavin, um, when I was actually opening our resort in Western Massachusetts. And we just quickly bonded over um, this kind of this stigma because the truth is I was eight months pregnant when we opened that property. And so here I was, you know, out to here waddling around this giant construction site. And I, you know, I, I was feeling that pressure. I was feeling, how am I going to do this? How am I going to be perceived? Am I, am I able to do this? And, and she recognized that me, in me quickly and said, stop let's talk about that, you know? And so um, she was just such a huge support for me. So she, at the same time, she was standing up this organization and I, it's, I was like, no, this is so needed. This type of community is so needed. So I was eager to get involved and it's just really great work that they're doing. Yes, and I know I myself, I'm gonna check it out. So I hope many of the people on my team also investigate that because it was something I'd never heard of before. So I think that's really cool. Um, we have one, another question. From Ryan, it says, how can you talk with leadership about work-life balance? And as an employee, what questions can you ask yourself to help you identify boundaries? Burnout is real. And I, I totally believe in the video burnout. I mean, I, I know I experience it. I try to walk my dog around the neighborhood every now and then just to get away from this all day long. Yes. But we'd love to hear what, how you could give advice to this person asking the question. Um, absolutely. And burnout is so real. There's, it's, it's across the board. There's a great article by Gallup um, called The Great Resignation, and it stems from just this, this life burnout that we're all experiencing. And so I think it goes back to some of those fundamentals we talked about. Like as leaders, we have to think of them as human first. We have to think of our teams. And so every single time something comes up that might be a friction point, it's like, take a step back. What is this person going through? How do we address what's really happening here? And then my obligation as a leader is to be really transparent with my leadership. And I will, I will tell you, our most senior leadership, our executive team here at MGM Resorts, they understand it. They, they're open. We're having the tough conversation. We're being very transparent about what we're seeing. And they are doing what they need to do to create um, independence and flexibility through certain programs and, and mental health has been a big part of our conversations all the way at the top of our organization and that's critical and I think you know our ability to be comfortable to talk about mental health and where people are at and us as leaders to provide um, the safety around that um, is critical and so I think as as an employee it's it's also you know how to manage that is just be true to yourself and be transparent with your leaders. Um, there is, it's, it's really incredible to see now team members saying, I need to take a mental health day. And, and that's one, it's okay, it's great, take that time. We're, we're all dealing with so much, both at a micro and a macro level, with work, with life. It just feels like everything's a little heavy <laughs> right now. And so I think it's just being honest with yourself, not being afraid to kind of step forward and say, I need to take time for myself because that's all that matters. And so I think it's transparency at all levels, transparency with your leader, but then us as leaders, transparency with our senior leadership about what's really going on. I know sometimes on my group calls with my team, I'll, I'll ask them a question and I'll get feedback that I had no idea about. So I think it is as a leader, just creating a safe space for people to feel like they can give you honest feedback on things. Um, 
I, this is a little bit, this is kind of a question that I personally have for you. How have you kept your team motivated? Like, what are some strategies when we're Zooming all the time? Like anything fun or creative that you've done? Really, it's hard. It's, I'll be honest, it's really hard. And so some of the, you know, we, we did Friday happy hour Zooms for many, many, many months. Um, I, th I think it's just, again, like finding, I do these things called health checks with my team. Um, as a leader, I put them on my calendar. I have to find time to connect with my team because we're not running into each other in the hallway. And, and I think that's been one of the most difficult parts of all of this is, you know, missing those hallway conversations and missing those organic interactions that just aren't happening anymore. So for me, it's finding the time to connect with the team, check in. I'm very like good about teams Monday morning. Hey, everybody just saying hi. Like you have to connect with people on a human level. Um, I think it's also, it's easy in this Zoom kind of electronic world to not only share the successes, and so one of my big kind of motivation, you know, tools is I'm constantly sharing the successes. If it's something small, like our CEO said, so-and-so did a great job, I'm immediately committing that to memory and taking it back to that person or such and such a campaign, you know, we saw two times return on that, like everything and everything in between. Um, it's so easy to get wrapped up in like output and doing the work and launching um, that we're not kind of bringing it always back to like, here's the work that you did and here's the impact that it had. And it, it's not hard. It's not difficult. It doesn't cost anything to just be very, very transparent about overt recognition. I think overt recognition is, is more important than ever. And just ensuring that the team understands the role that they're playing and sharing those successes consistently. I love that. Um, I think that's great. So I know that you love building up like marketing leaders and for our audience, what advice would you give your team and mentees to grow in advance um, in their marketing careers? And for women specifically, what advice would you give right now in this world? Um, for women specifically, and it, it kind of goes with what I said before, like fight for yourself be out there, put your hand up, ask for what you want. There's no better time to be incredibly selfish. <laughs> if, I, if I'm being honest, be selfish for yourself. You know what you want, go fight for it, ask for it. Um, I think leadership is more open and you know appreciative and encouraging than ever to retain employees and develop employees and give them those opportunities. So just don't be afraid to ask. I know it's, again, it's a simple concept of leaning in and out, but like lean in heavy and, and fight for yourself because um, it's, it's critical on behalf of all women that we do that. Um, but I think again, right now, one of, um, one of the kind of emerging, and I, and I talked about this actually in my last fireside chat, like one of the emerging trends I'm seeing when I talk to like young leaders or, you know, marketers that are just coming into the workforce is they're just very like specific about where they want to be. And I was no different. I thought I wanted to be, you know, throwing big parties, but be open. There's marketing is such a vast landscape and there's so many different directions to go. And so be open to multiple points of entry and, and various paths. Um, and I think that's one of the things, again, leading to where I was, where I am today is I, I was open to saying, huh, hadn't thought about that, but I'm going to do it. And because it will just make you well-rounded and it will just help you understand more what, what drives you and where you ultimately want to be. And so I think just being open to opportunities. I think that's really helpful. Um, now to get back to a little bit, I, I know we've seen some categories kind of pop for us and, and travel has been one and getting back into, you know, entertainment and, and all sorts of different things. How has the impending travel boom really kind of impacted your media strategies? And have you been able to cut costs on marketing campaigns due to some pent up demand? Um, so pent up demand has been a wonderful thing for us. Um, we, we, we definitely saw the boom come back. Our, our customers were eager and excited for kind of those, those fundamental experiences that we provide across the entertainment landscape. Um, but for us, this has not been a cost cutting exercise. If anything, we've invested more in knowing who these customers are, 
understanding their behaviors, you know, testing different kind of media strategies, you know, optimizing our, our kind of channel landscape, you know, where are we investing at what points of the funnel are we investing? Well, let's try some, some other stuff, you know, cause we know that we have to continue driving brand awareness. We have a large portfolio. Um, and we know that at times not everybody understands the depth of our portfolio. And so brand awareness is, is a key is a key driver for us. So it's not just about kind of volume and visitation. So we, we definitely have become much more um, prescriptive with how we spend and optimizing our spend, but definitely not a cost cutting exercise in any way. If anything, it's just more about better understanding our customers. And as you look towards, you know, the end of this year and next year, what makes you excited? What makes you nervous? What do you think the biggest challenge is going to be? I mean, I know there's a lot going on. So yeah, I'm sure this is something you're always thinking about. Um, well, obviously the Delta variant COVID is not gone by any means. And so that, that concerns us. We, you know, everyone understands what happened with the travel industry. And so the, the impending cloud of that potentially happening again, um, you know, is always going to hang over us. And so we're always going to stay really attuned to that. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges we have as marketers today is we're all very reactionary because we're responding to how the customers are now engaging with our products. Um, and as we said, we had a boom, they all came back. The pent up demand has been incredible. And so a lot of our strategies right now are short term. Like how do we, how do we manage what's in front of us right now, 30, 60, 90 days, but now balancing, okay, well, we gotta look, we gotta look ahead. What are we going to do in 22? And I think it's just that kind of hesitancy around the unknown. Um, the flip side of that is we have a lot of incredible growth strategies that we're focused on right now. What's happening with the digital gaming and the sports betting landscape is an, is an incredible opportunity for us. Um, again, innovation around our digital experiences. And so it's just, I think one of the challenges is balancing that short-term and long-term when there are these potential you know, outliers along the way. Um, but that's also kind of the exciting part for us marketers is, is where is this going to go next and, and how are we going to continue knowing our customers and, and what are they going to look like six months from now? Because I think our customers are all going to look very different. So over the past year, I, I know the business has come back. Um, you know, there was this pent up demand. What is a success that was kind of surprising to you? Or is there anything that was like, oh, I'm, I'm excited about that. And that was awesome. Oh, we've had, we've had a lot of uh, successes. Um, one kind of risk that we took, uh, I'll just speak really high level. Um, we launched a new brand campaign for MGM Resorts as the portfolio. Um, and we hadn't done one in a few years. And we had said consciously we were going to launch a new campaign coming out of, you know, the pandemic. Obviously, the right time to launch that campaign was going to be critical due to, you know, sensitivities and what's just happening around the world. Um, our voices were very bold and declarative, so we knew we wanted to come out and be bold. And so we launched a, you know, a full brand campaign in July, and it was centered on, you know, it's time. It's time to come back. It's, it's time to come and experience um, the experiences that you love. It, it was a bit risky, um, but the reaction and the reach of that campaign has really surprised us all, quite honestly, and kind of the, um, the consumption by not only our customers, but our partners and, you know, various kind of partners across, you know, the brand marketing space have reached out and said, you know, we're really proud for how you, you came out bold. And so it was definitely a risk. It was all about the right timing, um, but really, really uh, surprised and happy with how that campaign landed. And timing is everything these days, isn't it? Um, and I know we have another question. Someone is asking, how has your loyalty strategy been impacted over the past six months? Um, it's, it's a great question. Uh, loyalty and our loyalty program and the value that our loyalty program delivers is, is a, a critical topic for us these days. And so it's been something that we um, are working on and, and more to come on that. Um, but how our loyalty program kind of creates connectivity to our extensive portfolio and delivers, you know, better value to our customers is something that we're, we're head down right now, kind of evaluating and looking at and reimagining. And so more to come on that, but good question. Yeah. And do you think your, do you think your consumer, your customer has changed 
since the pandemic? Was it, did it used to be a certain group and now you've, you're seeing new people kind of come in? Um, yes and no. So one of the, the kind of big moments of enlightenment for us when we opened our doors was like our core customers, like that core segment that are like loyal gamers and, you know, they came back. And so it was almost like back to basics, like they, they are most loyal customers and they came back. They were the first ones to come back. The flip side of that is like that luxury non-gaming lifestyle traveler. They have changed immensely. Um, I, I think I said it earlier, they're just much more discerning in how they spend. They're spending and they want to spend, but they're just much more discerning and they want more for their money. And that doesn't equate to value in terms of like discounting or promotions. They just want to feel like they've been enriched more by their vacation. And our competitive set is no longer just like the resort corridor, but it's every other destination and every other experience out there. So it's how do we create more for, and how do we connect with customers on how we deliver that value to them? So that's been, it's been interesting. So both, it's like servicing the customers that are ride or dies, but then also like adapting to that new modern luxury traveler. Um, okay, so we're getting down to the last few minutes and I wanted to ask you just a couple little quick ground kind of fun things. Sure. What's the app you can't live without right now? Um, probably two, my Peloton app. I am a Peloton loyalist. And so I, I use the app consistently. Um, probably the other one would be like, I use, it's called um, Insight Timer. And so big meditation and kind of calming and breathing techniques. I recommend it, check it out. And so those are probably the two apps I can't live without right now. And what podcasts are you listening to? Smartless. If you haven't heard Smartless, it's Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, Sean Hayes, and they have a mystery guest every week. And it is fun and insightful and fascinating. And I just listened to the one with JJ Abrams and you just learn so much and you have a lot of laughs along the way. And it's like one hour. So it's like perfect if you're working out or you're right, like taking a long walk. It's Smartless. Check it out. I love that. And then tell us all what you've been reading lately in your spare time with your three, five-year-old and your. Yeah, I am reading, career. but it's taking me longer to finish the books these days. Um, but uh, currently finishing up Alice Hoffman's latest book. Um, she's my favorite fiction writer. It's called The World That We Knew. It's beautiful. Um, her writing is just remarkable. Um, but I toggle between nonfiction and fiction. So next up on the nightstand after that is um, the Bob Iger biography I think it's called the last ride of a lifetime so that'll be next got it and are you is there anything and I know this is probably even trickier for you but as far as you know trying to watch a television show or streaming something <laughs> less less watching tv these days than even reading um, but I did manage to just make my way through white lotus um, a lot of people watching white lotus right now I can't tell you if I liked it I, I don't know um, it was as fascinating as it was disturbing um which I guess makes for great tv uh but it was it was I just couldn't turn it off and so I just plowed through that and then Ted Lasso if you're not watching Ted Lasso you're missing out it is just wholesome good tv you are the second person that's told me that one so I loved all your recommendations and I haven't read Alice Hoffman in a long time but I have read her before so I am going to check out her new book that's so good that's funny. well thank you Laura yeah, Sarah, it was so good to talk with you. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to see, you know, how your business is going to change and how you guys are going to adapt and all the other new cool things that are going to happen with everything online. It's just such a huge category now that's, that's new and developing and yep. it's big in Detroit and it's, yeah, it's huge. Fun. It's football yeah. season. Yep. <laughs> so. Exactly. A lot coming up with football season. So thank you. Great chat. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Laura. Appreciate your time. Um, for those of you who recognize me, I'm not Ariel. Uh, both of us are just kind of going back and forth today. Um, so I'm back here. I'm going to be overseeing um, the rest of the event today. So I'm super thrilled to be here. But again, Sarah, Laura, thank you. Also, White Lotus is very, very, in, in, a very interesting show. <laughs> I don't know very if I like it. <laughs> I, I mean, I binged it too. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, I, it's it, it, either whether you liked it or you